story begins with a controversial researcher named Terence McKenna. Terence McKenna was kind of the uh, subcultural Timothy Leary of the 1980s and 90s. He did these kind of mathematical graphings with the I Ching and turned it into a kind of map of time. Before his death in 2000, McKenna noticed an unrecognized pattern in the 64 hexagrams of the I Ching. The six lines and 64 possible combinations can be expressed as a ratio of change in each hexagram and plotted on a graph. When McKenna mapped that graph over a timeline, he found intriguing correlations that matched all 4,000 years of recorded history. His graph starts with the I Ching's creation in China's Shang Dynasty, the same period as the dawn of civilization in other parts of the world. The 64 hexagrams repeat 64 times over history. McKenna called his theory time wave zero. The highs and lows of his I Ching graph seem to have accurately predicted the fall of the Roman Empire, the discovery of the New World, and the world wars of the 20th century. But the strangest thing of all was that McKenna's timeline came to an end on one specific date. December 21st, 2012. And it was later that McKenna discovered that the Mayan civilization ended its calendar at the point of 2012. He felt there was something truly prophetic about that date. Did the I Ching from ancient China and the Mayan calendar from medieval Mexico independently arrive at the same date for doomsday? What I feel is particularly remarkable about the current time is that we have a number of prophecies that all seem to imply that something is going to happen in the 21st century. The time scale of some of the traditional South American prophecies is the same as the time scale of the medieval Welsh prophecies of Merlin. The wizard Merlin, best known from tales of King Arthur. But that was the Merlin of fiction. The real Merlin was much darker with prophecies that foretold the end of the world. There is an ancient oracle of doom who is now almost forgotten. His name, Merlin. We know Merlin as the wise wizard in the pointy hat from Legends of King Arthur. But the historic Merlin was very different from the popular image. In fact, in the Middle Ages, Merlin was considered one of Europe's greatest oracles. His prophecies include terrorist attacks, global warming, and planetary catastrophes, possibly in our own time. There are two significant medieval texts that deal with Merlin. In fact, they're so significant that before they were written down, there was very little about Merlin. The legends of Merlin have their birthplace in ancient England. The prophecies were published in 1135 AD, but were based on texts that dated from the fifth century. These texts describe Merlin as a Celtic shaman, half man, half demon. The name Merlin is an English version of an older Welsh name, Merthyn. The ancient Welsh called him Merthyn Wilt, Merlin the Wild, a half-crazed man of the forest. But was Merlin a character of legend, or did he really exist? It seems very likely that the word Merlin, or Merthyn, was a title rather than an individual's name. And the researchers and writers have felt that they were probably at least two, maybe three, historical persons who had that title. Merlin was a title for a mad prophet in the woods. The prophecies of Merlin seem to predict events that happened centuries in the future. One thousand years before anyone knew that America existed, Merlin predicted the first American colony by name. A colony shall be founded by virgins in virgin soil. Merlin also
also predicts the British victory over Napoleon at Waterloo and foresees the horrors of the Nazi Holocaust. But it is Merlin's prophecies for the 20th century that are the most astonishing. At that time, shall a man standing on the shore of England speak instantly to a man standing on the shore of France through a speaking stone? And it makes me think of the cell phone and quartz technology, our little speaking stones that we hold. But then, Merlin's prophecies turn darker. First, he foresees a disaster in Great Britain. The seven sea shall discharge itself and the river burn for seven months. Fishes shall die in the heat thereof and shall grow multiple tails. The Severn is where the nuclear power stations are, are sited in Britain. So it would seem to us that this is a description of meltdown. The prophecies get worse. London shall mourn for the death of 20,000, and the River Thames shall turn to blood. Is this a reference to a terrorist attack? Merlin goes on to foresee a more global problem. The sea shall rise up in the twinkling of an eye. The winds shall fight together with a dreadful blast. A lot of these predictions of submerging sound very much like modern scientific predictions of global warming. They start to look a bit like these channel prophecies. The prophecies of Merlin ends with its own deadly apocalypse. The apocalypse in the prophecies of Merlin is astrological. It says that the planets will run out of their appointed paths. And it says that the planets will run riot through the signs. Now, there's only one way that could happen, and that would be if the movement of our Earth changes its rotation. Like the Mayan calendar, Merlin's prophecies seem to reflect a prediction of polar shift. If it's correct that these changes to the magnetic poles are going to continue and be as dramatic as they have been described by some scientists, then it does really mean that the nature of the planet will change. And that, of course, is where it ties in with some other prophecies from other traditions. Centuries after the prophecies of Merlin were written down, another English oracle appeared. Her timeline of doom is nearly identical. It's apocalypse now. When pictures look alive with movements free, when ships like fishes swim beneath the sea, when men outstripping birds can soar the sky, then half the world, deep drenched in blood, shall die. These prophecies came from a woman known as Mother Shipton, said to have lived in Yorkshire, England in the early 1500s. I think the idea is a seeress who lived in a cave, just like Delphi, who is born of human and other world spirit, just like Merlin. You see certain themes that endure through the centuries. According to her biography, written in the 1600s, Mother Shipton correctly prophesied the death of Henry VIII and the defeat of the Spanish Armada, predicted Queen Victoria by name, and prophesied the upheavals of World War I and II. The prophecies of Mother Shipton first appeared in print in 1641, but when scholars have tried to track down the original texts, they have come up empty-handed. Despite the fame of Mother Shipton, there is no evidence she ever lived at all. Most of the prophecies of Mother Shipton were written by later people. People would produce small books of verses and say, the new prophecies of Mother Shipton just discovered. A little bit like National Enquirer. Mother Shipton may have been invented by the London writer Richard Head in 1684, whose faltering writing career was saved when he began to publish these prophecies. 